Well, what I'm going to do is just show, start to finish the process of how you're going to smoke when you get your big one egg. You don't have one already. Run the light process first. So you can see here, I went ahead and threw one of the little fire starter sticks in there. But I'm going to just dig a little bit of a section right in the middle. We're not going to have a real hot fire today, so we're not going to have to light it in more than one spot. All right, and I'm just going to set that fire starter right down there in the middle. You can use a lighter. I've got matches today. These are pretty handy. Nice thing with the match, you can just leave it in there and it burns up. Get that getting going. I'm going to make sure my draft door on the bottom is all the way open. And then what I will do is just pull some of this charcoal kind of over the top once I know that that little starter is going with do some charcoal for it to burn. Like so, I'm going to give that just a second. I could go ahead and put my grate on. A lot of times I'll do this just so it starts heating up. It's easier to clean when it's hot. In this case today, this is a brand new grate because it's a brand new egg, so we're not going to do that. We're going to turn this into an egg fest egg for somebody. So I'm just going to let that rest. And once I know that fire starter stick is going 100%, then we're going to shut the lid. Okay, so what I'll do now, I still have the draft door open on the bottom. I'm going to slide this all the way open so that we're basically, it's, it's like a chimney starter at this point. Just pull an air in through the bottom, right through that uh, fire starter stick in the charcoal, and then exiting out the top. So that's only going to take about 10 minutes to get up to temp. We'll take a break here. I'm going to get my ribs. Actually, we'll talk about what we're going to do today. We're going to smoke some ribs. Uh, so I've got everything kind of lined out and I'll go get those here in just a second while this is warming up. But we're going to season, I like to mix the, the Big Green Egg Savory Pecan 50-50 with the Sweet and Smoky from Big Green Egg. And that was actually just used in one of the videos that was turned in that you may have watched already. We're going to hit the, during the cook on the ribs, we're going to use our Big Green Egg Moppin' Sauce. Uh, this stuff is really good. Some people use apple juice, but this has got really good flavor to it. Uh, we'll hit that several times with the mopping sauce, and then we're going to go KC style and finish it off with Kansas City Sweet and Smoky barbecue sauce throughout the process as well. So we'll take a look, or you can see the bigger egg. It does not take long at all. It's been just a few minutes. It's starting to come up. We're going to shoot for 250 degrees. So that's going to take it just a few minutes. It'll probably be ready by the time I go inside and get the ribs and come back out. So I will be right back. Okay, so a lot of people ask, when it comes to temperature control, we want to make sure we showed this to you today. So we watched this close. It's been just a few minutes since we went off the camera. But people ask, when do you, they see the different settings that you have for airflow. But people ask, well, when do you start adjusting the temp? Uh, so we caught this one just right on time today. Right as Aaron started the camera, it was at 250, and you see I'm starting to climb. If I continue to stand here and talk, uh, which nobody wants me to do, that temperature <laughs> is going to just start creeping up. It'll get to 300, 400 bad idea. It's not going to be the end of the world if you do that, but you really want to try and catch your temperature as close to that target as possible rather than let that keep uh, creeping up. So since we're at 250 and starting to climb above that, I'm going to start our damper process to get the temperature locked down, which is just restricting the airflow. And we've shown this, I think, on a couple long cooks. Uh, I'm actually going to go about a fingers opening on the top. If you've got the old lid, you just do the, the holes open. And then I'm going to take it all the way down to a credit card down here. That sounds crazy. It looks crazy. For 250 degrees, that's the only airflow we need in the Big Green Egg to maintain that temperature. With credit card there, and just about a finger here, that's all it's going to take. If my temperature still gets a little bit above 250, my next step would just be to bring this in a little bit more. So the main thing is get it set, let it kind of dial in. Right now it's still show, showing uh, almost 300 when I caught it there, but we're just now starting to restrict that airflow, and it's going to start coming back down great time while you're waiting for that to kind of get settled. Uh, we actually know, until you get familiar with it, I would say make sure your temperature is dialed in before you start adding everything else in. Uh, I am 100% certain that's going to hold 250 today, so I'm going to go ahead and put my other ingredients 
save some time on the video and show you what we're going to do here. So first thing, let's get it smoking. What turns a big green egg from a grill uh, into a smoker? Number one, indirect. Indirect heat, which we're going to show you here in just a second. But before I put that in, I want to get my smoking chips in. So we're going to add wood chunks. You can do chunks or chips. This is pretty cool. I actually did a blend between uh, oak and pecan uh, for this recipe. This came out of our smoke and fire room. If you're familiar with Outdoor Home, you've been in there, the orange room in the back corner of the store. We have over 20 different smoking uh, chips and chunks that you can choose from. You can mix them, grape, olive, persimmon. We've got so many different things. Today I'm using pecan and oak mixture 50-50 with chunks. Um, then we also have all the seasonings and stuff you can try back there as well. We'll talk about that in a second. But what I'm gonna do now, I've got a real big piece there. I'm gonna move just a little bit out of the way so I can get some of this wood down in that fire so we get some smoke right away. You can tell by color which one's which. That's that's our pecan wood. The darker is oak. And then that fire is going to spread throughout during the day so I'm going to kind of mix around. Another trick you can do, you can put a couple pieces down here in the front. RD shared that that little trick because then you can use your ash tool later in the cook and I can knock it down into the center if that's still where the fire is. I'm going to just put that in place there. I did forget a disposable pan. And then I can put my grate in there as well. Okay, going to let that smoke. Don't want to leave that lid open, otherwise that fire is going to start getting to go, but it's going to start rolling smoke out right out into the street. That should get some attention today. And we'll start working on our ribs. What you will notice on that temperature, since Aaron's got the camera on there, don't panic when the temperature goes down. That's because I put that convector inside. And it's not hot like the rest of the egg, so it's probably going to lead. It's probably going to read even a little bit shy of 200 for a while, but it will warm up. Don't touch anything; just just let it go and let that smoke start rolling out of there, and we'll get our ribs ready. And we mentioned, I think, a few minutes ago on the on the ribs, I've taken the membrane off the back. Didn't need to show that process. Pretty easy. Some do, some don't. I prefer to. So. We've got two slabs of baby back ribs. Get these ready before I get the hands dirty. You can do mustard or olive oil. I prefer olive oil because I'm not a mustard fan. You won't taste the mustard at the end. I just don't like playing in it. So just to give the uh, seasoning something to bind to, we're going to hit these with a little bit of olive oil. Yeah, took the membranes off, and I trimmed just a little bit off there. If you get a big, big hunk of meat on there or a big hunk of fat, sometimes I'll take that off, but I don't, I don't get too crazy with that. Okay, so we rub those up. We're doing a 50-50 blend with our sweet and smoky and our savory pecan seasoning. These are going to be on there for a while, so I'm going to go fairly heavy. Great tasting stuff, has a real nice color, especially as it cooks. I'm talking about seasoning. We just grabbed these, you can see it says sample on these because I just grabbed these from inside, also from our smoke and fire room. Uh, we have over 70 seasonings and sauces in the smoke and fire room, all of which you can safely try a little sample. And the cool thing is we have what we call rub cups. If you decided, hey, I want to try that recipe and I want to try that sweet and smoky and see if I like it as much as Kenny and everybody else does, you can come in and just get a two ounce ramekin of this stuff, enough to do one batch of ribs. You could even mix it 50-50 with the savory pecan and see if that's your cup of tea before you actually buy the entire container. If you get hooked on it, then you can come back and buy more or you can try something else. You can try any of the 70 seasonings one cup at a time so that you can do one recipe at a time. Find out, try it before you commit to a whole bunch of it. We've all had those seasonings, maybe we've tried on recommendation and you don't like it as much as others and then you never use the rest of the bottle. That won't happen if you do it this way. All right, that's a good dose of our sweet and smoky. We'll switch to savory pecan. This stuff, much easier to pour. And I will go a little heavier on the pecan. It's so good on pork. Okay, 
get a good dose on there and I'm just gonna kind of pat it make sure it it's getting in place there I don't mess with seizing the backside where the bones are okay we're pretty much ready to go there so our process here we've got nice smoke coming out of the egg some guys will wait and make sure that you've got the clear blue smoke versus the yellow. I don't get too worked up over that. It's, it's going to change eventually anyway, so we're about ready to put those on. Well, So the process here is I'm going to put these on. Um, we're going to use, actually, but uh, very inexpensive and handy uh, accessory that you can get, especially with a large egg, it comes in handy. This is the smaller version. We've got two. This is the smaller that holds four. Uh, so I cut my rib racks in half. And I'm going to put four of them uh, in this rib rack. You could even do, you know, you could probably get another one if you have there. You also make well, the larger rack will also fit in the large egg. It has six. So I can add another slab. But don't be afraid to kind of pile some on the edges um, around there. So you could fit easily get four or five slabs of ribs on a large egg. Then you start using the expander, go to the second shelf. Now, you know, who knows? Some people have gotten really creative in how many they fit in there. The rib rack is kind of nice because it keeps them upright. upright and not touching so they all get that smoke and that heat that smoke is smelling really good right now mm -hmm. I like to kind of put them facing each other so. bone side in like so so you can see there Super, super easy. So we've got them set up at this point in time. Now it's just a matter of time. Uh, baby back ribs, if you don't do any tricks like putting them in foil for a while to uh, speed the process up and break them down, normally somewhere between four and five hours, normally between four and a half to five. Uh, but the first portion of it, I want to get some bark on there back in a couple hours. And at that point in time, we'll start mopping with our mop sauce. So as you can see, we're still locked in at 250 degrees. It's been about two hours. It's been about two hours since we put the ribs on. And now we're going to do the next process, which you don't have to do this, but we're gonna do the process of mopping. So what I've got is the traditional mopping sauce from Big Green Egg. I wanna make sure I shake this up really good because it has a tendency to settle. It's got some apple cider vinegar and molasses, brown sugar, some spices and stuff in here. So this is not barbecue sauce. You can tell by the, the consistency, it's a lot, it's a lot thinner. The idea here is we're gonna brush this. You can do it whenever. I like to do it after the first couple hours. And I'm gonna apply this probably every 20 minutes or so, put a coat on there to try and get, wait for that. <laughs> to try and get layers of, it's just gonna add more flavor to it. So every time we baste it, we're just putting another layer of flavor. It also gives, I think it gives a little bit better glaze as well. Uh, nice, pretty color that it adds to it. So uh, to make it easier, I'm just gonna pour it in here. That'll give you a chance to see the good color as well. That'll give me a couple applications there. I've got a nice little brush. So we'll take a look at what our ribs look like at this point. Looking, looking pretty good. There's two hours in. If you are a fan, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Today I'm not going to. But if you're a fan of what they call the crutch, where you would remove the ribs, uh, at this point in time, you're two hours in, this would be the time that you could actually do the crutch, which you put it in aluminum foil. We take those ribs off, wrap them in aluminum foil, to put some uh, beef broth, some people like to do apple juice. You could spritz, whatever you want to do, this would be the time that you would do that on baby backs. Two hours smoke, then usually an hour to an hour and a half in the foil, and then the final hour outside of that. You don't have to do that, we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna mop them, and I'm gonna mop them every 20 minutes or so once we get started here. So I'm gonna grab the first slab, just kinda lay it over where I can access it, and then take my mop, and it's just like mopping a floor. Just. Coat that whole side of the rib. And then I'll put it back in its spot. Stuff really smells good too. And if you notice, right before we came back, I went ahead and slid knowing I was going to do this. 
you don't have to, but if you notice I've got the big green egg pan underneath. Uh, that just keeps your, especially with all this sauce we're going to be adding and everything, that kind of keeps us from getting all that stuff on the uh, convector. It won't hurt anything, it's not going to hurt the convector. But if I got all this barbecue sauce on that uh, on that convector and then tomorrow we decided to do biscuits on this egg, uh, they're going to taste like barbecue ribs. So not exactly the flavor profile I would always want to have. So if you keep that clean, we can just throw that away. And they sell those in five packs, which is really handy. And we got one more half slab here. And you can see there's some seasoning and stuff in there. It, just adds, it smells really delicious. You can smell the vinegar in it. It's got a sweet smell. And from a color, you can tell it just add more and more layers of flavor. Still got the smoke that's coming out of there. And I will do this process. We won't show you every time, uh, but I'm going to continue to come out here about every 20 minutes and do another, another mop on that. And we'll come back. Uh, I'll do that several times. And then our next goal will be to kind of check them here in a little bit after I'm doing that. And we'll pull them off and put some sauce and go right back to it. Okay, so we are just over four hours now on our baby back ribs here. So we're going to go ahead and open up. Those are looking mighty fine. So I went ahead and kept hitting the mop sauce. It was about every 30 minutes or so. We are working today as well, so I had to get some stuff done. But roughly about every 30 minutes, I hit them with that uh, mopping sauce. It's got a lot of the apple cider vinegar, some sugar in there. It's a nice flavor profile. Now what I'm going to do is get these off of this rack because we're going to finish them on the sauce. So I'll show you kind of what we're looking for here. If you've got a full slab of ribs, you can do a couple tricks to kind of see when they're getting close. You can pick them up. Once you get a hold of it, you can kind of pick it up and see if it starts to break there, which it's starting to, it's getting close. That's why we're going to go ahead and move to the saw side. I'll move those there so I can slide this. We're done with that now. It's much easier to do the sauce when you don't have to take them out of there. So now we'll just kind of scatter them around. You don't want to do the sauce too early. These probably have another 30 to 45 minutes left as we kind of thought. You don't want to do it too early because it does have a lot of sugar in the sauce and that's going to kind of, kind of, kind of caramelize. We don't want to burn it. So we're still at the 250 degrees and now I'm just going to hit it with the first coat. I'll do this a couple times. You only have to do it once and for those a lot of people like ribs without sauce. You can do that as well. Some with, some without, however you want to do it at home. And this, again, is the Kansas City Sweet and Smoky Sauce from Big Green Egg. And the goal here is just to get the sauce on now so we can cook it for a little bit and kind of bake it in and make them nice and it'll, it'll firm up and get sticky. So that's also where that's handy to have that pan underneath so it's not totally dripping like Okay, so again, we're at four hours. Looking pretty good there. I will let this go for, I may let it go for another 20 minutes and check on it again and either add some more or we may be uh, ready to cook here. We'll check them here in another 20 minutes. You can see that bone right there. That's what you want to see. It's starting to stick out. I call that a knuckle. That means we're getting really close. So we'll take another look in 20 minutes and we may be ready to pull them off and do a sample. Okay, so let's take a look at our finished product here. It's been four hours and about 45 minutes total. When we left the last time I was doing the sauce, I put the sauce on on the first application. I did one more application after about 25 minutes or so. Um, and then, so that was about 20 minutes ago. What you're looking for, a couple different ways I've, I've learned over the past to, to tell when a rib is done. When you start seeing the rib come out, we're separating there. That's usually a good sign and you can actually, these ribs are a little bit hot, but you can grab that and twist. If the rib twists, it's done. Uh, you can also, if it's a full slab, you can just pick the slab up and give it a little shake. If it starts to break like three or four ribs in, that's usually how I tell the, at least for the way I like it. If you like it fall off the bone, you can just keep cooking it. Or the foil definitely helps with that if you leave it in the foil long enough to, to get it to where it just falls off the bone. So let's 
we'll get these off of here and let them cool down for a minute. You see how that sauce is? It's not, it's not dripping or anything. It's just totally cooked on. You see the bones there are all kind of coming out there. I'm going to pick this slab. These are going to be hot, so I probably won't eat it, but we're going to see what we've got once we once we carve into it. You can do it either way. You can actually kind of go right through the middle of the rib, or if you like more meat on it, you could go right next to the next rib. So, oops. You actually got to get in between the ribs. I'm going to cut a couple of these here where you can see what we've got. So you can see a nice color, a nice smoke ring. You can see the moisture. I don't know if the camera picked that up or not, but that's a hot, that's a hot rib. You can see the gloves. Yeah. This is great. 